Good evening. I would like to welcome you all to James Clemens High School and our first annual Advanced Placement Informational Meeting. My name is Kelly Nichols and I'm one of our administrators here at James Clemens. I have the privilege of introducing you to some fantastic teachers that we have in our building, as well as a pretty good counselor. Mr. George Cruz. Um, he's going to speak to you first tonight about the advantages of the pre-AP and AP um, pathways and the effect those have on your transcripts and what colleges are kind of looking for. We've also got with us tonight Dr. Amy Feinberg with A Plus College Ready and she's going to speak to you all about the, um, the initiative that A Plus College Ready brings and how they will assist our students and our teachers. So we've got some really good information from several sources and then of course our amazing teachers that are here. Um, and so I hope you get a lot of questions answered and just keep in mind that if anything is remaining a question with you after tonight. Anyone that has the Ask AP, ask me about AP button on. They were more than willing to help you answer any of those questions that you may have lingering, um, and then we can be reached via email as well. I would also like to say that we are recording this session tonight, so if you think you miss anything or if you want to hear something back, we will have that video posted online for you tomorrow on the James Clemens website. Okay, so um, at this time, I would like to welcome Mr. George Cruz, one of our JET counselors. Mr. Cruz. Uh, I like to hold the mic. Good evening again. My name is George Cruz. I'm one of the counselors here at James Clemens. I've um, been a counselor for 10 years or so, working in Colorado and now here in Alabama. And there's a lot of great information for pre-AP and honors and AP work and all of that information. I'm, I'm, I'm about to give you everything that you think you know about the program and turn that a little bit for you. All right. Pre-AP Honors AP coursework. Here in Madison City, all pre-AP Honors and AP courses are noted on a transcript. Um, every one of those classes receive additional weight. Looks a little small up there um, as far as the grade point average. So all our Honors and Pre-AP coursework, they operate on a five-point scale. It's a little dark up there. What's in the black right there is in our honors and pre-AP coursework, an A is five points versus four. A B is four, C three, a D is two, okay? On our AP, in our AP courses, we actually give them two additional points as far as weighted GPA. So again, if you get an A in an AP course, you're gonna get six points out of that versus a four. And so additionally speaking, weight is added. Pre-AP honors and AP courses are offered in pretty much every area. You're going to hear from folks tonight, English, math, science, social studies. We offer AP courses in career tech, art, music, biomedical uh, honors programs, health science honors programs, and our world language programs. Okay, so we offer advanced coursework in pretty much everything in this building. Um, what, what does pre-AP and honors mean? It's a world that includes enrichment activities and extra projects and research um, and lab experiences. But the goal to keep in mind with pre-AP is for us to provide a foundation for students to find success in AP coursework or college level rigor in the future. Okay? That's what pre-AP and honors is here. We want to provide the foundation for students to find success later in life. All right. As far as registration and scheduling are concerned, I gotta put this out there. Careful attention should be sought and really lots of consideration when taking on this level of coursework. Once students are enrolled in courses, you are not allowed to drop a pre-AP honors or AP course. So that's why we ask and we have meetings like this so that you understand the level, the ex expectations and the rigor involved with taking these courses, okay? Everybody's so serious. All right. As you're taking a look at that and keeping everything in mind as you're selecting your courses, how many of you out there think that the highest level GPA and I'm going to take these classes because I want the 6.0 class and I want my child or I want to excel to the highest point and look great on paper with a 6.0 GPA? No one? Okay. 
Well, I'm here to tell you that higher GPA or grade point average is not always as important as the level of courses that you take. And in a few minutes, I'm going to show you that, and I'm going to ask you some questions to keep in mind as you're selecting courses. Colleges and universities. Again, I've worked in a couple of different states. I've been doing this for about 10 years. They tell us time and again, it's about the rigor. How many of you heard things in, or read things in the paper? It's about inquiry skills. It's about types of programming that kids are taking so that there's no remediation in college. Well, this statement right here, it's about the rigor of the coursework when they're looking at determining status because many colleges will actually unweight that GPA. Okay, so while it's very important that we want you to excel and we weight grades here, the reality of it all is when you are applying to college, they want to compare apples to apples. Rigor is often more important than your overall grade point average. Now let me show you. I had a student, a couple students here that graduated last year. I'm going to show you some transcripts here. You notice that first year, this young lady taking honors coursework, okay? There's English 9 up there. There's Spanish 3. That first year, you see the GPAs up there. Weighted GPAs, 4.12 and 3.67. Respectable GPAs, weighted. The next year, still taking honors coursework. You see some grades in there, A's and B's. That's what we like to see, right? A's and B's. Again, respectable JPAs, nothing below a 4.0. Again, all weighted. Last year, first semester, this is what a college will see up to first semester, mid-year transcript. It's a biomedical student, a student taking advantage of our biomedical honors program. Respectable GPA. At the end of the first semester, you see that weighted GPA at 4.08. Everybody agree that's a pretty decent GPA? It's an A average, correct? This is what the college sees. When they de-weight it, it's a 3.6. Now again, respectable average. That's a B average. All honors coursework for the total transcript. This student ended their senior year, because I got more data, ended up taking one AP course, correct? And then pop in the standard GPA, the weighted grade a point average of 4.13, unweighted 3.64. Okay, so when you're looking at the importance of taking on level rigor AP coursework, this student has a variety of courses, predominantly honors work, correct? All right, second student, same thing, started ninth grade honors coursework. Okay, you see A's and B's predominantly. Second year, AP coursework starts creeping in there. But you notice that AP chemistry grade, how many parents out there would see that 78 and start freaking out a little bit? That's a C. Oh my goodness, that's a C. All right, I explained this the last time, but a C average, you're now taking a 16-year-old student taking a college-level chemistry course and achieving a C. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but a college-level student is probably about 19, 18, 19, 20 years old. Your 16-year-old student is now achieving what a 19 and 20-year-old is average. So, when I say rigor and level, your student's doing pretty darn well. Respectable GPAs. Senior year, added physics on there. Added some um, engineering programming, okay? GPA, a little higher because of the AP coursework. Yeah, you know, when I said GPA is all important, that's what the college sees. Do you remember the first one that was just all honors? Is it very different? So you have a student here. This is what he ended up taking his last semester. You see advanced engineering, three AP courses. Overall GPA ends up being a 4.4 and a 3.7. Okay, so you remember what I, when I showed you that last student that was all A's and B's, 
an unweighted GPA on, on that transcript, 3.64. This young man, lots of AP coursework up there, unweighted GPA, 3.7. Apples to apples, who do you choose? The importance of AP coursework is about rigor, level of courses regardless of grade. If you're one that totally re re relied on GPA, 3.7, 3.6, not a whole lot of variance in there, unweighted. AP courses versus honors courses, who's the stronger student? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cruz. All right, at this time, we're going to ask several of our departments to speak to you about um, the courses that they offer in their AP, in their AP classes. Um, first, I would like to ask Mr. Keith Anderson to join us, and he's representing the Fine Arts Department. So, uh, good evening. My name is Keith Anderson, uh, band director here at uh, James Clemens High School. I also teach AP Music Theory and uh, the Fine Arts Content Lead, and uh, just wanted to talk with you just very briefly about the classes, the AP classes that we have in our, uh, in our Fine Arts Department. We do have AP Music Theory, and uh, we're adding this fall, beginning this fall, an AP Art Studio Drawing class uh, for our visual art students. And uh, it's exciting to see the, uh, see the school growing and the demand for those AP classes in the arts uh, come to fruition and, and be able to add though add those classes in our in our arts department um, a little bit about the uh, a little bit about the, the the music theory class it is a college level course which has been uh, which has been mentioned this evening and it gives it gives the students you know we we try to make sure like mr. Cruz said you know with academic rigor I know that uh, the, all the arts teachers really take that word rigor to heart and make sure that our performance classes um, you know, push and, and push the students and, and get the rigor there. But the, the AP classes also allow those students that, that may have an interest uh, in those, you know, in those directions if they decide to pursue that in college to give them an idea of, of where their skills are and really dig in to the, uh, to the, to the more academic side uh, of things. And it, and it really, it really does help to, uh, to push the students to realize their, their, their true potential. So um, I would love to answer any questions if you, if you, if you have any, um, if you see me around in the auxiliary gym uh, at our open house or, or at any time you can uh, you can send me an email and uh, like I said the um, the AP music theory students is is uh, the, uh, the AP music theory class is open to uh, open to music students and then the uh, the art studio drawing um, is open to students that have completed the the art cycle through art four and I can tell you more uh, more about that uh, as well so thank you thank you mr. Anderson Next, we have Ms. Mary Crouch, who is going to speak about um, World Language Department, and I think you're going to focus on the Latin, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'm going to get that on AP World Lang Language Ancient. Ms. Crouch? Okay, um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the AP Latin program that we have here, um, and I'm just going to go by my script because... This is uh, somebody else's specialty, and she's holding down the fort in the auxiliary gym. <laughs> um, AP World Language, ancient language, means reading, translating, and analyzing at an advanced level so that students are able to interact with classical texts of both poetry and prose. Uh, students will read and analyze authentic texts in Latin. Authors include, but are not limited to, Virgil, Caesar, Livy, Catullus, Cicero, and Ovid. Uh, students will also render passages into English with high level of, of accuracy. Um, they'll also become familiar with pertinent Roman culture, social and political history, um, literary figures of speech, and poetic scansion, which is just analysis of poetry, if you don't know that word like I didn't. Um, and finally, they will also write essays on topics related to passages in Latin and discuss central themes such as love versus duty, self versus society, destiny versus action, mythology, and politics and society. Being a part of AP World Language Ancient means interacting with the Latin language and ancient Roman culture at a distinguished and exemplary level that is sought out by many top tier colleges and universities. So if you have any questions about the uh, AP World Language um, 
courses that we have here at James Clemens, we also have Spanish um, and other languages as well. You can join us over in the career fair in the auxiliary gym. Thank you. Thank you. And she is one of our fantastic Spanish teachers. So um, I'd like to also note that we offer the AP French as well as AP German. And again, um, our teachers that can tell you more about those are in the auxiliary gym or you can email them. There was, I believe, a notify me that went out with some uh, information from our world language department that had the emails um, of those ladies if you would like to contact them. All right, now I'd like to ask Coach Clint Woodfin to come up and speak to our AP offerings in the Social Science Department. Good evening. Uh, what you see right here is our regular and our recommended AP track that we have for uh, our AP Social Science classes. One of the great things about the AP courses we have within social sciences is typically your child coming into the ninth grade will probably take their first AP class within our department. Currently right now, uh, the only class offered to freshmen is AP World History. I teach AP World History along with AP European History, and I'm a little biased toward AP World. I feel like that, that I'm kind of the, the, the parent that that gets your child ready for, for their AP career and mold them and then, and then send them out the door for the rest of their uh, high school academic career within AP classes. And I feel like that the skills that they learn in AP world history are vital to their success in, in, in really any other AP class in any of the other AP courses, math, science, foreign language. Uh, currently right now for next year, our recommended track for freshmen is to take AP Human Geography, which you see up there, uh, which is not currently offered, but will be offered next year. We feel like that this class is a good springboard, uh, not only to all the other AP classes that your child may be taking, but also for the other social science classes that they may be taking. Uh, we see a lot of our AP World students eventually move on to take the other social science AP classes that, that you see. And typically AP world history in terms of a first class is very, very rigorous. I tell my students that this is probably the most rigorous AP class that you will have from this point forward. And if you can get through this, you can do anything that you want to do here at James Clements. The recommended track right here for AP Geo AP Ge Human Geography is a little less rigorous. It's more conceptual. There's a lot more application. And so it's a way that they can kind of get their feet wet as they begin to move into their other AP classes their sophomore year, for instance, like AP Bio or some of the other ones that they want to take. The big difference that you see right here for the AP track that I want to make sure that you guys understand is AP US, which is offered their 11th grade year, is our only AP class that's offered for an entire year, an entire academic year, August to May. The other classes that you see are 18-week classes. AP US offers a big advantage of taking an AP class throughout the entire year as opposed to just one semester. The other things I want to point out are our electives, AP Psychology and AP European History, along with AP Geo. Uh, AP Psych and AP European History offer one really good advantage. They may be the easiest AP classes you guys ever take at James Clemens. I mean, if you were going to take an AP class, this is what I would take. I teach AP European History. It's a reality television show. AP Psychology, a lot of hands-on experiments, um, things that are, that are very, very appealing to students, and I would even say fun. I don't know if there's anything I do in my classes that are fun. AP Psychology is a fun class, I promise you. And typically, I tell my students that if you take anything in, the, in terms of an AP class, if you've never thought about taking an AP class, AP Psych and AP European History may be something that you want to think about, maybe your junior or maybe even your senior year. Again, my name's Clint Woodfin. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free. You can shoot me an email. I'll I'll be happy to answer anything that you have, or you can find me in the auxiliary gym. Thank you. Thank you, Coach Woodfin. Um, and this, I'm going to add a little something to that. If you notice on the AP track for ninth grade on the Human Geo, that does say elective. So that does not count as one of your required social studies credits, okay? So we just wanted to put that out there as another offering um, for those who 
you want to ease into the AP track because as Coach Woodfin said, AP World History is a very demanding course. So if you're thinking about AP but aren't quite sure, you can test the waters with AP Human Geo your freshman year. But just know that does not count as one of your four required um, social studies core credits, okay? All right, at this time, we have Dr. Amy Feinberg joining us, and she's going to speak about A-plus college ready. And if I can do a little quick, quick change and bring her PowerPoint up. There we go. All right, Dr. Feinberg. Thank you so much. I want to thank uh, Ms. Nichols and uh, the staff and administration here at James Clemens for having me here tonight. Um, I'm very excited to come speak to you about our program about A Plus College Ready. We are an education nonprofit that works with the Alabama State Department of Education to bring AP Math, Science, and English courses to public schools in Alabama. Um, we are funded by the State Department, and so I want to show you how your tax dollars are working uh, here at James Clemens and across the state to help uh, all students um, experience AP. So let me just kind of go over our wheel here of what is A-plus college ready, and I'm just going to hit the highlights here for you. Um, we offer support in four different areas. We offer teachers support, and so what we do with teachers is that we train them in the summer. They get to go to kind of teacher summer camp um, every summer for three years as they are part of our program to learn the best practices and most up-to-date information to teach your students. Uh, this is an opportunity that um, that is typically pretty expensive and most schools can't afford to send their teachers every year to AP and pre-AP training. Uh, so we're very glad that the state is, is helping us fund this opportunity for teachers. We also encourage vertical team meetings uh, with your middle school so that, so that a pipeline is built from early on so that students are getting the preparation that they need to be able to have the option of taking AP courses when they get to high school. Over in student support, we encourage really open access to AP. We don't feel like AP and pre-AP are just designed for the top 10% of kids. We feel like all students who are thinking about their post-high school opportunities should take a pre-AP and or an AP course by the time they graduate so that they have the option of going to college or going into a career um, and, and have those options just wide open for them. He, we don't feel like in high school that students should limit themselves on what they take. They should feel uh, very, um, very free to choose AP courses. We know that with the state's current um, emphasis on college and career readiness, that we want all students who graduate from Alabama public schools to be ready for their options when they graduate. Some kids just decide to go ahead and step up to the challenge of taking college level credit before they graduate. Other students might wanna wait until after they graduate. But what we want is we want all of them to have the option to, to step up and take that challenge at any point during high school. And we feel like building that pipeline by supporting our teachers and getting them the training that they need is what we do to uh, help students be ready. We also provide equipment and supplies for your school to stock their math uh, courses with calculators and protractors or whatever they use in math, I don't know, um, and uh, to get science equipment uh, to uh, in your English classes to buy class sets of novels and the types of readers that they need to be successful. Um, so we, um, we do that. And we also provide Saturday study sessions. Uh, some of your students or some of their older siblings, if they're not in AP currently, may have gone to some study sessions recently on a Saturday. What we do is we bring in master teachers from across the state to come in and teach your students the same content or an extension of content that they're getting in their AP course. It kind of helps your students to, to one, review for the AP exam, but also to hear from another perspective this, the information their teacher's giving them. Sometimes, I don't know if this, surely not your children do this, but sometimes when they hear you speak or they hear their teacher speak, it sounds like Charlie Brown, wah, 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 wah. And then at this dynamic teacher from, you know, Jefferson County comes in and teaches them, they're like, oh, wow, I never knew that. Well, of course they did. They heard it in their class, but now they know that their teacher knew what she, he or she was talking about. So we really feel like those are excellent opportunities for kids to get the review they need 
but also to uh, get another perspective on the content that they're learning. We also provide uh, help to the administration and the staff here at James Clemens to help them identify students who are uh, already ready to take AP and pre-AP courses. We work with them on their standardized test data and on their selection techniques so that they can identify who among you in the audience is uh, already ready to step up to the challenge, whether you think you're ready or not. Um, we also provide subject matter experts in math, science, and English. We have people on our staff who are veteran teachers. They've been teaching um, AP courses for years, and they uh, are available to the teachers at any time to come and help them either teach or answer questions and provide that support they need. We also provide awards. Students who um, earn a qualifying score on an AP exam earn $100 for every three, four, or five they make on an AP exam. Uh, so that's, that's exciting as well to get that Visa gift card in the fall um, and buy some shoes. That's what I do. Um, so uh, this is just kind of an over, overall view of your tax dollars at work helping schools across the state with um, AP and especially your students here at James Clement. Oh, I think I lost my feed here. I talked too long. Okay. It'll come up here in just a minute. But as it's coming up, um, what... Um we are in schools that have varying levels of an AP program. Um, we have gone into schools that have absolutely no AP. They've never heard of AP. They just thought this would be fun to apply for. Come on. Yeah, sure. I'll offer an AP class. And they're, they're a little bit deer in the headlights, as you can imagine. We also have schools like yours that have very successful um, histories with advanced placement in districts like Madison City. And in each of those districts, we're able to see phenomenal success. Currently, we're in 108 schools and 59 districts. We hope by the year 2020 that the legislature will continue to fund us and we'll be able to be in 200 schools by the year 2020. We anticipate this year we will be supporting over 550 teachers and over 16,000 students in our program. So we feel like this is, uh, this is a good use of, of our money. And here's another reason why it's a good use. This is the success of students in our program over the last five years. Um, as you can see, the blue is the nation's increase in qualifying scores in math, science, and English over the last five years, the percent increase. Last year, the U.S. saw a 6% increase in qualifying scores. Over five years, they saw a 42% increase. In the state of Alabama, over five years, uh, we've seen 118% increase in qualifying scores. The green bars show the different cohorts of schools that we have worked with over the last five years. That first cohort, cohort one, the one that has been in our program the longest, there were 12 schools in that cohort, mainly from Jefferson County and Montgomery County. Schools in this cohort included Jefferson County International Baccalaureate School and the LAMP Magnet School in Montgomery, two of the top schools in the nation. They... In, along with their fellow schools in that cohort, saw 155% growth in qualifying scores over five years. Our most recent cohort, cohort five, saw 119% growth in one year in qualifying scores. So we feel like the level of success is in fact, more than the investment that we're making in these schools. These schools are certainly rising to the challenge. These students and their parents and their teachers are seeing the value of taking advanced placement and pre-AP courses, and they're seeing success as a result. This graph um, enables us to compare apples to apples. So it's kind of unfair to compare a school that's really small or that has never had AP to a school that's really big. Okay, because certainly the sheer number of qualifying scores would be different in a school like James Clemens versus a school like Brindley Mountain. Okay, I, I didn't even know there was a Brindley Mountain until a couple of years ago. So what we do is we do a little math and we make it to where the number of students in, their, in each school's population is equivalent to a thousand juniors and seniors. And then we're able to show how many scores that school or that cohort would have had if every school had just a thousand juniors and seniors. 
So as you can see, the green bar, the top bar, that's our first cohort. They started off pretty strong. They were above the state average of 42, but below the national average of 103 qualifying scores per 1,000. But you can see that even schools that are very, very successful, like JCIB and LAMP and the Jefferson County Schools and Montgomery County Schools, they're very successful and have continued to see success over five years. As we have grown in our program, we have added cohorts of schools that are a little more challenged, schools that are either at or below the state average for increases for qualifying scores. But as you can see, as each, each cohort of schools has been in our program, they have seen phenomenal success, phenomenal increases in qualifying scores. You can see that cohort five started off at 46 qualifying scores per 1,000. In just one year, they went up to 101 scores per 1,000. We feel like that's pretty impressive. And I feel like our program has been partially responsible for helping our state move from 42 to 89 qualifying scores per 1,000. Here's the same data just related to students of color, minority students, African American and Hispanic students. You can see as well, we have grown in those areas. Now, AP and the cost of college. So this is a big motivator for parents especially to uh, get their students into advanced placement because while your education here is a public education and is subsidized by your tax dollars, the education on the next level comes out of your pocketbook, okay, in, in a much more direct way, right? You have to write those lovely checks. And so over the last five years, our students have earned about 14,000 qualifying scores, okay? The average cost of a four-year public institution in Alabama is about 18,000 a year. That's just for one year. The average cost of a three-hour course at the University of Alabama and at Auburn is about $1,800. It costs $89 to take an AP test. We feel as though potentially if every one of those 14,000 scores had gotten a quali every one of those qualify 14,000 qualifying scores had been accepted for credit at their respective universities, if they would have gone to Alabama and Auburn, then Alabama families could have saved over $25 million in tuition costs. Okay? Now, all of these students didn't go to Alabama and Auburn. Some went to more selective schools. Some went to schools that cost a whole lot more. Some, um, some decided instead of taking the uh, credit for, say, their AP biology course, maybe they were going to be a pre-med major at UAB, and they wanted to go ahead and take that UAB biology 101 so that they could be speaking the same language as their professors and really involved in that program. So they may not have elected to, to save on, on that course, but I guarantee you if they took an AP course in high school and they made a qualifying score on that AP exam, they had a much easier time passing and probably making an A on that AP biology course. So even if your student doesn't make that qualifying score, or even if that college doesn't necessarily take that particular score for that particular course, they're going to have an easier time that freshman year, which is going to help them persist in completing their degree on time. AP students, research shows regardless of who's doing the research, that AP students are more likely to graduate on time than students who do not take AP. And that's over $18,000 in savings if you're going to Alabama and Auburn. So there's a lot of potential savings here to being an AP student. Even if you're not making that qualifying score, even if you're not taking that credit at that particular university, taking the course, taking the exam helps to prepare you for college, sometimes in, in intangible ways. And those ways then translate into an easier time in college, which then, as I would tell my students, makes you popular because then you become a tutor and everybody wants to be your friend, right? That's pretty intangible and priceless, really. So what can you expect from taking an AP course? You've heard the word rigor a lot. That word rigor, it's like from the word rigid, it sounds inflexible and difficult and like a big wall you're going to smack your head up against, right? Not here, okay? When we talk rigor, what we're talking about are high standards. 
We're talking about challenge. We're talking about hard work. It's not going to be a walk in the park. It's not going to be an easy A where you only have to kind of maybe study a couple minutes before you walk into the test. If you've had that experience in school, if school has been easy for you, it's probably going to stop being so easy if you sign up for these pre-AP and AP courses. But that might not be a bad thing. What happens here at James Clemens is that your teachers are going to be here to support you. Okay. Here, the classes are pretty small. Probably 25, 30 in a really big class is my guess. In college, I would probably be teaching a class this big if I were teaching AP Biology or AP Psychology or AP, um, AP Math. If I, were teaching that, if I were teaching that level course in college, it would be you, me, and 200 of our friends, right? That professor doesn't know your name. That professor doesn't really have time to tutor you if you're struggling. You might catch them during their office hours if you read the syllabus to know that they're having office hours. And what does that mean they're having an office hour? And what do you mean you can't, I can't tweet you at two o'clock in the morning when I don't understand the problem, right? Here, you have a level of support that you're not going to get if you're taking a college course at a college. You're going to have a teacher who knows your name. You're going to have a teacher who's going to be available. You're going to have a teacher who is going to help you when you struggle and pause during class to answer your question because it's probably a question that several other people have. And that's going to translate then into results. Your students are going to be successful. They're going to be more confident when they go into college the next year or in two years or in three years or heck, if you're taking freshman human geo in four years, they're going to be ready for whatever college throws at them. Challenge and rigor and all of that when they're going out on their own for the first time and they get to determine their schedule and there's parties, they're going to go, you know what, I can handle this because I can juggle things because I have had AP at James Clemens and I have been successful. And that's really invaluable. So what's the message for you students in the audience? advice. Plan to work hard, okay? As they've told you, they're not going to let you drop. So if you're going to pick these classes, understand that it's not going to be a walk in the park. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard, but it's probably going to be very interesting as well. Choose AP courses, though, that interest and challenge you, okay? I know that there's probably going to feel, you're probably going to feel a lot of pressure, some of you, to take every single AP course that James Clemens offers, because I want to have a 7.8 GPA, which I think you can get mathematically. I'm not sure. It feels like it, right? There was a whole lot of credit there, okay? Some of you are going to be like, I must have A's in all of them, and I must take them all. And so, like, at, at your senior year at 2 o'clock in the morning, you're going to be like this little mini zombie, and you're not going to be able to function, okay? I would recommend that you choose courses that challenge and interest you. I got two great pieces of advice when I started college, one was that I needed to choose a major and I needed to choose courses that I would be willing to get up at three o'clock in the morning to work on. Now I thought, wait a minute, I don't want to get up at three o'clock in the morning and do work. I want to sleep. But the point was not that I needed to find a job that it's going to make me wake up at three in the morning, but I needed to find a job that I'd be willing to do when I didn't want to do it. So pick those courses that you're going to be willing to read that book for. When you pick up the textbook, you go, you know what? I think I want to read that. I think I want to know what that says. Because then when it's late and you've got a lot of homework and you're trying to balance it all and you really want to call your boyfriend or tweet him, you're going to say, you know what? I really want to read this chapter because it's cool. The second piece of advice I got was that you should take courses from good teachers regardless of what they teach. Because a good teacher is going to make what they teach interesting to you. From what I've heard so far and what I think I'm going to hear soon, these teachers are awesome. 
And so if there's a really good teacher who has a really good reputation and who's really firing up his or her students, you should sign up for that person's class whether you want to be a biochemical engineer or not. Because that will make you appreciate good learning and good teaching and help you recognize it and help you figure out whether you, hey, maybe you want to be a biomedical engineer. Also, keep in mind those admission and scholarship advantages that AP offers, okay? I think what Mr. Cruz showed you guys was very powerful, that by taking AP, you're putting yourself in a different playing field. You're letting those colleges and universities know that you're not afraid of challenge because they are interested in challenging you. And they want to make sure that they have students on their campus who are going to take the challenge and persist in that challenge. So if you can do those things, if you've demonstrated it already in this safe, cozy, comfortable environment, you're going to be fine on the next level. And then remember that competing in that global marketplace begins now. Okay. We are competing against countries and students who are already like testing into their job when they're 14. We think, you know, we're going to let our kids, you know, figure out who they are and what they want to be. And that's great. But do it here while it's that free public education that we all value here. Competing begins now. I really encourage you to participate in the AP program here at James Clemens. It is, um, you have amazing folks working here. You have amazing um, administrators supporting you all. And please feel free to contact me, Amy Feinberg, or President Mary Bohm um, in our office or through email, and we'll be happy to answer whatever questions that you have. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much. Yes, give her a round of applause. Thank you. Okay, I know we are running short on time, but as Dr. Feinberg said, these are amazing teachers left on this stage, and I feel it would be a disservice for you not to hear from them, so I'm going to ask them to speak very quickly about math, science, and English. So if, uh, Mr. Kane, if you will go ahead and come up while I am pulling up your slide. Uh, good evening. My name is Kip Kane. I teach senior English here at James Clemens High School, and I'm just going to talk to you briefly about our AP English program. Uh, we have two courses. AP Language is uh, a course for 11th graders, and AP Literature is a course for 12th graders. Uh, the AP English courses are, contrary to common perception, actually driven by logic and the use of hard data. However, what can make it challenging for students is that the application of the data is often interpretive in nature. With this in mind, our courses primarily focus on the ability to clearly communicate an argument based on the literary da da data that is available to the student. Uh, we train students to closely read and analyze text and then transfer that skill into an effective structure of communication. The uh, AP language course mostly focuses on nonfiction, and the AP literature course focuses mostly on fiction. Uh, unless your child uh, ends up choosing to take higher level literature courses in college, it is quite possible that our AP courses here will be the most rigorous English courses that they ever take. Um, I asked several of my students in my AP literature course this morning uh, if there was anything they thought that I should express to the parents at tonight's meeting. And across the board, they told me uh, that the skills that we learn in both of our English courses directly translate to their success on other AP exams. Most of the AP exams uh, have some form of writing component, and our courses certainly help them prepare for that. Uh, in closing, I would just like to encourage you to encourage your, uh, your children, if they are interested in the AP English courses, that that is something that they should sign up for. Uh, we feel strongly that it will help them not only here in high school, but in college and professionally. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Ms. Hartfield will speak about our AP math offerings. Hi, I'm Ms. Hartfield, and I am one of the AP calculus teachers here. We offer three AP math courses. We have AP Calculus AB and then BC, and then we also offer AP Statistics. Um, one of the questions that we get asked quite a lot is um, about what the difference is between AB and BC. 
Um, an AB course is going to be equivalent to about a, a first semester in college of college level calculus. Um, and then a BC course will get you about uh, equivalent to about two semesters of college cal calculus. Um, they're both very, very rigorous courses, but at the same time, they are very, very interesting and, um, and wonderful courses. I think you would find anybody who's going to major in any kind of engineering, science field really should consider taking our calculus courses. I think that um, you would find that we give a lot of support. As Ms. Feinberg mentioned earlier, we have support in a lot of different um, opportunities. We have the study sessions that A-plus provides for us, but we also have tutoring. And just in general, the support of the classroom is going to be so much more than you would find in a college calculus class. So I do think if you're planning on that sort of track, I would highly encourage you to take the AP Calculus course offerings. Um, I feel like most of the people in the room are ninth graders, and so you, what you are a rising ninth graders. What you really want to think about is how to prepare yourself for that calculus course, um, and that would just um, I would just encourage you to to take the um, pre AP algebras and the pre AP um, pre calculus, and that will get you very prepared for that. Um, AP Calculus course um, that you would want to take. Um, the other course that we offer is AP Statistics, and I think it is one that is not taken as often, but it is an extremely good course. If you're particularly not as strong in mathematics, you're going to find that AP Stats may be the course you really want to take. Um, most every college degree is going to require a stats class, and um, and, and it's not, it sounds to me a little bit more like the course Mr. Kane was describing in his English class. It's a lot more analytical in nature. Um, it, it, it's a very good course. I would highly recommend that you take that, um, um, that you take that at some point. And the fact is, if you take those, um, double up on your courses, you could take all three of those courses. And I would highly recommend that you consider that. We also do have an AP computer science course, which is not mentioned here, but certainly if you ask anybody with an AP button about it, they would be more than willing to help um, to talk to you about that. Thank you, Ms. Hartfield. And finally, we have Ms. Simons, who's going to speak to you about AP science. Good evening, and thank you for sticking with us on this long evening. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the sciences that we do offer here at James Clemens. As you can see, there are mainly four core areas in science. And typically, these do not start in the freshman year because you might see that they all are based on chemistry. So typically, freshmen coming in would take an honors biology and get into chemistry or pre-AP chemistry as quickly as possible so that you can use that as your bounce off to all of our upper level sciences, not just the AP classes. So you see we have um, AP Biology, which is typically a junior, senior level type course. Um, environmental Science, which could be taken pretty much at any time within your career, although we have several sophomores taking it this year and doing very well in that. AP Chemistry typically is also a sophomore level class. And then AP Physics C, which is what I personally teach. That C, by the way, stands for calculus. So this is paired with the calculus classes. Uh, many of the students there are either taking it concurrently or have already taken calculus. Um, and then the course guide, there's another physics class that's not listed up here. That is physics C, electricity, and ma uh, magnetism. What I teach is the mechanics, which is your typical forces and motion. Electricity and magnetism, it has a slightly higher level of calculus needed, so fewer students tend to take that, and we combine with Bob Jones for that class, at least for now. Um, and so that would be a class that you would go to Bob Jones to take and then come back here for your other classes. Um, one of the things that I know our biology teacher would like for me to point out is over the years, the AP classes do go through a redesign and they tweak all of the different subjects. And biology has just recently done that. And the thing that they really have emphasized in biology starting with this year is that it matches what you see on the ACT for science. So for those of you who are trying to increase an ACT score, science is quite often one of those subject areas that isn't quite as high as the other two. So this is a way to help raise that score and help out in, in college um, preparedness there. 
all of the other sciences throughout the years will eventually be adopting more of that AP style, um, ACT style as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. As, as we said, we ran a little long on that one, but I do appreciate you all sticking with us. Um, at this time, this concludes our AP informational session. So if you are not joining us for the Rising Jet registration meeting, I would ask that you go ahead and exit. And I'm going to do a quick transition up here. So if you're joining us for the registration meeting, give us about two minutes and we will start that. Thank you so much. <laughs>